What's up guys, P here from the Sunday Drive and in my hand I have an Attack Blue Nano Filter and we're going to be testing to see if it actually makes more power on my C7 Corvette without a tune. And we have a Dynapack Hub Dyno here to do some testing. So let's get started. So we're setting the car up on this Dynapack and the first thing we need to do is make sure that the gearbox is loaded up. So. We're gonna go over here and go to differential gearbox setup, and this is the seven speed gearbox ratio um, list. So you can see fourth gear is one to one, and my rear diff is a 3.42. This is a not an electronic limited slip. This is just a regular mechanical limited slip diff. So the first three dyno runs are done. It actually made more power than I expected stock. Now I also data logged this using HP Tuner so we can see all of the data coming from the ECU. That's the main thing I'm gonna try and compare. So even though we're gonna try and look for higher horsepower numbers, which it looks like I was around 415 horsepower and 430 or 435 torque, don't mind this one, that was the third run. It did something wonky at like 5,000 RPMs. So uh, the other two were very smooth, but I'm gonna look to see when I put the new filter in, if the mass airflow is picking up more air and that will be shown by a higher frequency. So that's like the two part system here. See if we get higher horsepower numbers and then see if the mass airflow sensor is reading more air getting into the motor. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this rubber cowl that allows air to pass from the upper part of the radiator through the hood. So that's held in by four seven millimeters. All right, you should be able to just zoom out. So take that out. Next, I'm going to unclip the mass airflow sensor right here. So pull out this red tab and squeeze the black tab inside of there. And that just pops out. There's a quick connect and this is a, the same connection that I'm going to go release on the other side. But as you can see, this gray piece is moving. So you squeeze it and you can lift this off. Now you can remove this plastic trim from the engine. Get a little bit more clearance. And there you go. So that's one end. And that's the other. And this is what the clip looks like. Now this is a coolant hose and this goes to the thermostat. Um, I'm not gonna disconnect this, so we're gonna work around it. But hopefully when we disconnect from the throttle body up here, uh, we can just weasel all of this out without interfering with this. But there is a clip down here along the side of the car. And this is normally clipped in like that. And it holds this little hose here. You can just pick up on it and that gives you some more freedom. So after you remove this hose right here, same thing as the first one removed, you can try and remove or loosen this clamp that's holding the entire air box onto the throttle body. So I'm using an eight millimeter and it's actually pretty loose, so. There you go. Make sure there's nothing on this side. Looks like we're good. And just pull it back, nice and easy. All right, so next up, grab a T25 and Take the two T25 screws on top of the air box out. So these look like they may be captive. Yep, definitely captive. So once those are out, you can start to see the filter. And then go ahead and try and pivot this out with the bottom like that. Pretty simple. And this is the entire intake removed. 
So as you can see, there's some extracurricular activities going on over here. This is for some sound deadening, um, so the intake's not as loud. So obviously, if you were just to run a straight pipe, your intake's going to increase in volume. And supposedly, this attack blue filter is supposed to increase the sound of the car, too. So let's go ahead and remove that. All right, and now the grand finale of this. Uh, pulling the original filter out. This is a filter with 30,000 miles. Granted, it has been driven mostly in dry weather, uh, not often in the rain. Not that I'm af afraid of the rain. I've been caught in the rain many times. It's just I have another vehicle, so no need. But it has been to the track a couple times. It's been to autocross. This is a stock filter. It's like a stock paper filter. And this is the new Attack Blue Nano filter, so supposed to breathe better and also improve power. Supposedly, this filter does not... Um, sacrifice any sort of filtering ability, which is good. And it does not need to be oiled, it is a dry filter. So go ahead and slide this in. Like so. All right, so that is how you replace the stock filter with this Attack Blue uh, Nano filter. So. Now we just have to put it back together, super simple. This isn't supposed to be a full in-depth install video. We're gonna get back to the dyno and see what kind of numbers it produces. First, we're gonna just see what it does right out the bat. We're not driving it for a while. We're not gonna let it figure it out too much. We're just gonna turn the car on, let it warm up, and boom, go full throttle. If the numbers don't seem to be improving as much as we think they should, we're gonna drive the car around for a couple days, see if the car recalibrates, and then see if we can get our 10 horsepower without a tune. So, after that, I might mess with the tune a little bit, see if I can get a couple degrees of timing, but let's just get back to the dyno and see what it does. did 10 horsepower more. It did 426. I had 416 before. This is pretty gnarly. All right, so here we have HP Tuner's data logs open, and on top, I have the data log taken before the air filter was replaced, and on the bottom, I have after the attack blue filter was installed. And the main thing we're going to look at right now is the mass airflow reporting. So at 6,300 RPMs, that's where both of these logs are right now, the air is pretty steady, I would say. It's, there's no transients, and I think that the mass airflow sensor is pretty reasonable um, to listen to. In fact, the car prefers it over uh, a certain RPM. If you look, the mass airflow sensor is reporting 8,500 hertz, which translates to 325 grams per second. Now, more grams per second is more air, and more air is more power, and you'll need to inject more fuel. So the two things we're going to look at on the log below are the mass airflow sensor is reporting 8,700 hertz, which translates to 348 grams per second. And if you look at the injectors, the amount of time that they're open is slightly more. You have an extra millisecond right here, 3.8, actually, so it's like 0.2 milliseconds. And we can compare that between the two logs. If you look, they kind of max out around 3.8, 3.9 through the entire top of the log. We're looking at these two numbers here. And then by the end, they drop off a little bit to 3.5, 3.6. If we scrub through the bottom log, same thing. We're going to look over at these two numbers. We're seeing 3.9, 4, 4.1. I think it touches 4.2 briefly. And then by the end of the pool, we're at 3.7, 3.6. So, or 3.7, 3.8. So uh, that's more fuel, therefore more power. So I think that's a pretty good way of saying that the car is making more power with the new air filter. All right, guys, so that's it. That is how the Attack Blue Nano Filter performed in my C7 Corvette. To be honest, I'm a little surprised. It did better than we thought it would do, and it made some power. So that's it. If you want to see the rest of this journey, the camshaft, the headers, the eventual supercharger, and, and tuning the car with HP tuners, be sure to stay tuned for that series. And if you found this video to be helpful, please give us a big like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.